Hey boys and girls, today we are going to look at a new strategy that we can use for test taking or for reading comprehension. Um, it's called Unwrap. It's going to replace Unravel for our class because I think Unravel is too hard for you guys to remember how to spell. It's too long. Unwrap is actually good as far as spelling. You can remember how to unwrap presents, so you're going to actually unwrap your reading for your testing. Um, so we are going to go over that strategy tonight. What, one thing I want you to do is after I'm done showing you what UNWRAP actually stands for is you're going to pause the videos and actually write that in your notebook. So you're going to um, define what UNWRAP is in your notebook before we go and do a uh, example. So first things first. Un, the U in UNWRAP stands for underline the title. You want to underline the title of your passage that you're reading and that will actually help you to let you know what the passage is going to be about. Second thing is N for number the paragraphs. Why do you want to number the paragraphs? Well, when you're answering questions, it's easy to go back and say, oh, I found that in paragraph number two, rather than rereading all the way through. W. W is what is the question asking. This is where you're going to look at all the questions and see what the questions are asking. That way when you read the text you have those questions already in your head and it'll be easier for you to find those answers. R is read the passage and you're going to want to read the passage twice. Not one time, two times. And that is so that you can retain some, of, some more of the information that you may have missed the first time that you read it through. A is answer the questions. Obviously go back and answer the questions. Just like normal test taking strategies, you're going to want to eliminate the answers that are obviously not correct and then go ahead and look and see if you can find the answers um, in the text. And that's where P comes in. P is prove it by circling the answer inside the text. So once you find the answer in the text, you circle or highlight that answer so that you know, okay, that is definitely the answer to my question. There is no guessing or anything like that. So go ahead and pause the video here. Make sure you write all of this in your notebook so that you can memorize what UNWRAP stands for and you can start using it in your tests. Okay, so here is a passage out of one of our first theme skills test that we did. And what I would like to do first is I'm going to go ahead and write UNWRAP down the side of my paper. And I'm going to do that so I can remember that what I'm supposed to do as I'm reading out this passage. So let's start with UNWRAP with the U. U stands for underline the title. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and underline that title. Second thing we're looking at is the N, number of the paragraphs. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right. Third thing, W, and W is going to st stand for what is the questions asking. So at this point, we're going to go take a look at these questions over here. First one is, what is the author's opinion of plane travel? Second one, which word in the first paragraph gives a clue to the author's attitude toward flying? Number three, which phrase from the story best supports the author's viewpoint? Number four, which statement would the author probably disagree with? And number five, based on the author's viewpoint, which of these is likely? At this point, there's not really uh, anything that I can do to eliminate wrong answers because I haven't read the, the passage yet. So let's go on to R, which is read the passage. And how many times am I supposed to read the passage? Right, twice, two times. So let's go ahead and do that. Title is First Flight. There is no thrill like the first airplane ride. I had my first taste of flying last summer when my grandmother, Gigi, took me on a trip to Washington, D.C. We arrived at the airport an hour before our flight. I loved the hustle and bustle of the crowded airport terminal. There were so many people going so many places. After Gigi and I got our tickets, we walked to the gate to wait for our plane. When our flight was called, Gigi and I walked down the long hallway to board the flight. A flight attendant greeted us as we entered the plane. We found our seats. I got to sit next to a window. Soon I heard the rumble of the jet engines. The plane began to roll away from the terminal and already my heart was beating fast. Are you ready? asked Gigi. I was too excited to speak, so I just nodded and smiled. As the plane went faster and faster down the runway, I closed my eyes. I felt the front of the plane lift. Then suddenly we were off the ground. 
I opened my eyes and watched everything below me get smaller. We climbed above the clouds. When there was a break in the clouds, I saw farmers' fields that looked like patchwork quilts. Winding rivers looked silver in the sunlight. I was having too much fun to read or nap on the plane. When we landed in Washington, three hours later, I was already looking forward to the flight home. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and read it one more time. First flight. There is no thrill like your first airplane ride. I had my first taste of flying last summer when my grandmother, Gigi, took me on a trip to Washington, D.C. We arrived at the airport an hour before our flight. I loved the hustle and bustle of the crowded airport terminal. There were so many people going so many places. After Gigi and I got our tickets, we walked to the gate to wait for our plane. When our flight was called, Gigi and I walked down the long hallway to board the flight. A flight attendant greeted us as we entered the plane. We found our seats. I got to sit next to a window. Soon I heard the rumble of the jet engines. The plane began to roll away from the terminal and already my heart was beating fast. Are you ready? asked Gigi. I was too excited to speak, so I just nodded and smiled. As the plane went faster and faster down the runway, I closed my eyes. I felt the front of the plane lift. Then suddenly, we were off the ground. I opened my eyes and watched everything below me get smaller. We climbed above the clouds. When there was a break in the clouds, I saw farmer's fields that looked like patchwork quilts. Winding rivers looked silver in the sunlight. I was having too much fun to read or nap on the plane. When we landed in Washington three hours later, I was already looking forward to the flight home. All right, now that we've read it, let's go ahead and do the A, which stands for answer the questions. Okay, so number one, what is the author's opinion of plane travel? A, most people enjoy traveling by plane. B, airplane pilots have the best jobs. C, plane travel is very exciting. Or D, airports are good places to meet people. So let's go ahead and eliminate some of those answers. A, most people enjoy traveling by plane. Now, is that the author's opinion of plane travel, or would that be an opinion, a general opinion on most people? Well, I would say it's a general opinion, not the author's opinion of plane travel. So I'm going to cross off A, because that doesn't make any sense to me. Number B, airline pilots have the best jobs. Well, in my reading, I didn't see anything in regards to airplane pilots, so I'm going to cross that one off as well. So that leaves me with C, plane travel is very exciting, or D, airports are good places to meet people. Now, in the text, it did talk about plane travel being exciting, and it also talked about a lot of people in the airports. But it's asking me what the author's opinion of plane travel is, not of airports. So that leaves me with C, plane travel is very exciting. Okay, now I need to go down and P, prove my answer. And I can go back into the text, and I can either go in paragraph one where there's no thrill, like your first airplane ride. I can go down to um, paragraph um, oh, I can go down to paragraph four where Gigi asked her if she was ready, and she was too excited to speak. So those couple of things can can show me in paragraph either one or four that plane travel is very exciting. All right, question number two. Which word in the first paragraph gives a clue to the author's attitude towards flying? So now we're looking at author's attitude towards flying. All right. Um, we have the words thrill, we have the words first, we have the words taste, and we have the words flying. Now, can we, I eliminate any of those? So, looking at the question, it says to the author's attitude toward flying. Okay, so attitude toward flying is not going to be first, so I can cross off first. How about taste? Taste? Nope, because that has nothing to do with flying. Um, and then the attitude towards flying is flying? Hmm, I, I don't really think that would be an attitude towards flying, or even a description word that gives a clue to the author's attitude towards flying. So that leaves me with thrill. Okay, now I'm going to go back and prove it. Here in the first paragraph, there is no thrill like your first airplane ride. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that so we can watch that or do some more with this text later. All right, so number three, oh, we're going to circle F. Number three, which phrase of the story best supports the author's viewpoint? A, we found our seats. B, I was too excited to speak. C, we climbed above the clouds. Or D, a flight attendant greeted us. Now we're looking for author's viewpoint. Okay, 
I don't think we found our seats is an author's viewpoint. Um, I don't think we climbed above the clouds is an author's viewpoint. That kind of gives us, a, I was too excited to speak, and a flight attendant greeted us. Um, a flight attendant really, greeting us really is not an author's viewpoint either. An author's viewpoint is something that they see or an opinion that they have. Okay? D is not an opinion. So that leaves us with B. I was too excited to speak. Now where can I find that in the text? Um, we're looking in the text. Let's look at paragraph. Oh, I lost my paragraph one there. Um, let's see. We can... Oh, so it's right here. After Gigi asked us, I was too excited to speak, so I just found it in paragraph four. And we know that author's viewpoint is an opinion, so we can say that in paragraph four we found the answer to number three. Okay, moving on to number four. Which statement would the author probably disagree with? F, flight attendants are helpful and nice. G, sitting by a window makes a plane trip more fun. H, things on the ground look different from the air. Or J, a crowded airport is loud and boring. All right, so we know that the author's viewpoint of flying is excitement, thrill, um, the hustle and bustle of the airport is, is awesome for her. What else can I remember? Uh, she couldn't speak. She was so excited. She could barely wait for the new plane ride home. So to me, it, me it seems like the author's viewpoint on flying is that it's awesome. So flight attendants are helpful and nice. Well, I think she would probably agree with that. How about sitting by a window makes the plane trip more fun? Um, I would think she would agree with that too because she's talking about how fun the flight is. Uh, H, things on the ground look different from the air. That doesn't really play into the funness or the excitement of flying. Or a crowded airport is loud and boring. But I seem to remember when I was reading that she was excited about the hustle and bustle of the airport. So let's go back to the text and let's find where she was talking about the hustle and bustle of the airport. Oh, okay. In paragraph number two, it says, We arrived at the airport an hour before our flight. I loved the hustle and bustle of the crowded airport terminal. So that would lead me to believe that the author would disagree with a crowded airport being loud and boring. So I would choose J. And lastly, number five, based on the author's viewpoint, which of these is likely? Now remember, the author's viewpoint is that plane travel is exciting. So A, the author will take another tra train, another trip by plane. The author will travel only by train or car. C, the author will move to Washington, D.C. Or D, the author will fall asleep on the plane on the way home. Well, I can eliminate all these answers without even hardly going back to the, uh, the text to find it because I know that the author's viewpoint is that she's excited about plane travel. So um, traveling by train or car, I doubt that she would do that since she thinks that flying is so exciting. Moving to Washington, D.C. has nothing at all to do with the viewpoint on traveling by plane, and D, the author will fall asleep on the plane on the ride home. Well, she thinks that plane travel is exciting, so I highly doubt that she will fall asleep. I know that uh, when you guys are excited about something, probably Christmas Eve, when you're excited about Christmas morning presents, you probably hardly didn't sleep. So uh, if a person is excited about something, I doubt they're going to sleep. So I think that the answer would be A, the author would take another trip by plane. I can still prove that in the text because down there in, in paragraph 7, she said she was already looking forward to the flight back home. So that is how we are going to do unwrap. I am going to expect to see unwrap on any passages like this that you have questions attached to it. So you will write unwrap down the side there and you will prove in the text. I'm probably also going to ask you to Right, maybe write the paragraph over here on where you found this information. So on number five, we found it in paragraph number seven. Number four, we found it in paragraph number two. Um, and for number three, we found it on paragraph, see, you should have done this while I was doing it the first time, huh, Ms. Fernley? Okay, that's number four. This is uh, paragraph number one, and um, this was paragraph number four as well. Okay. So that is our unravel strategy, and um, we're going to be doing that in class together as well, and, and we will also be practicing when we're doing our theme skills test and our testing 
in general. So uh, go ahead and continue to watch. If you need a break, go ahead and take a break because we need to just go over prefixes real quick and then you can do your WSQ. All right, guys, before we finish up for tonight, we've got three prefixes for this lesson that we need to go over. Those prefixes are going to be re, miss, and x. Here are some sample sentences. Marvin reorganized the bookkeeping system. He worked slowly so that he would not miscount the number of cords each man cut. And he was happy to exit the small office at the end of the day. Pause the video here and think about a couple of... Uh, other sentences or other uses that it could be used for these prefixes. All right, so see if you got these right. Re means again. Reorganize is to organize again. Rewrite is to write again. Renew is to make new again. Go ahead and write two more words that have the prefix re in your notebook along with what re means. So you're going to need to pause the video. Next one is miss. Miss means wrong or badly, such as miscount, to count wrong. Misbehave, to behave badly, like Mrs. Brinley's children. Misprint is printed wrong. Okay, I want you to write two more words that have the prefix miss in your notebook, along with the definition of what miss is. So go ahead and pause the video now. And X. X means out. Exit, to go out, explain, to turn something out so it is understandable. Explode, to turn something inside out. Important, many X words do not stand alone when X is taken off. So plowed doesn't stand for anything. Plain doesn't mean anything. It is a, a something, so I don't know how exit means to go out, but it does. So understand that when you're dealing with X words, it doesn't necessarily mean that the word has to stand by itself, like all of our other prefixes seem to stand alone. When you have X, that's not always the case. So go ahead and think of two more words that have the prefix X in your notebooks, along with the important note and the meaning of X. And when you're done with uh, making sure that all your notes are taken care of, please go ahead and do your WSQ. W, get your parents to sign off that you watched this video. S, give me a quick summary one paragraph summary of what you watched for language arts and um, if you have any questions please write the questions down see you tomorrow